Hello and welcome to another video tutorial about FreeCAD. In this video tutorial we are going to have a closer look at how to do an engraved text, like shown here on the screen. We will be doing this by having a closer look on the tutorial on the FreeCAD homepage at www.freecadweb.org if we click on Tutorials, we will be presented inside the category D with the Draft Shape String Tutorial, which we are going to follow. As you can see here, all the different steps are described in detail, and we will repeat them one by one, and we will be discussing alongside the different uh, operations used and the uh, different um, options uh, used inside the operations. The version of FreeCAD I'm using here is the 0 0.16 stable release on a Windows 7 64-bit system. So let's begin with our tutorial. First I will create a new empty document inside FreeCAD and I will make sure that I did switch to the part workbench which we will be using as a first workbench in this tutorial. Here on my system I am using the Blender navigation style. By doing a right click in the 3D view you can change to a navigation style of your liking. The first thing we will be doing is inserting a cube now we select the cube in the tree view here and we will change its width to be 31 millimeters as stated here on the home page of FreeCAD in the tutorial document. So I will enter here 31 millimeters. I will switch to axometric view and I will uh, fit all uh, in the view here. So, as you can see, FreeCAD does show here a white tick mark on the blue background, meaning something in the document has changed. The user is recommended to regenerate the whole document. Regeneration of a document can be done by clicking on this icon here. As you can see, a tick mark disappears. This icon is grayed out. So FreeCAD does think now that everything is uh, actual. All changes are applied to the document. With FreeCAD, I have also adopted the habit to click one time in empty 3D space to make sure that everything which may be selected at that time is deselected. So as you can see the cube is no more highlighted, everything is deselected. Now we want to apply a chamfer to this edge here. As you can see in Blender mode, by moving the cursor on a face or on an edge, the edge is highlighted and pre-selected. That's one of the things I personally like about the Blender style. So we make sure that this edge here is selected by clicking on it. The color changes to green, so now it is selected. And here we will apply with this icon uh, on top by clicking on it a chamfer. As you can see here, FreeCAD has already recognized this is edge number 6. I could add more edges by clicking on them or I could use the filters here for example to select a face and all neighboring edges would get the chamfer. So at the moment we are at a default value which means a chamfer of 1 mm. We need to change this to 5 mm. 
as you can see here, value did update, and by clicking on OK, we will apply a chamfer to this edge. OK, so the next step would be do a right click here on the object chamfer and select toggle visibility. You also could have selected this object here in the preview and press the spacebar to toggle the visibility of the object. So I'm clicking now in empty space to deselect everything. I'm switching to the draft workbench and now I'm going to insert the text string. The first thing we must do according to the instructions here is make sure that the work plane is set correctly. So the work plane is controlled by this button here and we need the work plane to be the X Y plane as you can see here in the bottom right corner uh, we will need the X Y plane to be the work plane to be able to insert our text correctly. The offset value we will leave at 0 mm and so I click on X Y or in other words the top plane to be the work plane. Now I am clicking on this icon here to insert my text. I will highlight this value here. I will insert a 0 on my keyboard and press uh, the Enter key. Now 0 once more, once more the Enter key and 0 and once more the Enter key. Now we need to enter the text string which is FreeCAD. Now I'm going to press return once more. The 8 should be 5 millimeters. Now I'm pressing once more the Enter button. The tracking is left at default value 0 millimeters. So once more I did press the return button and now we are able to apply a true type font to our text. Um, if you specify in the preferences a true type font uh, to be chosen by default, it will appear here. Otherwise, you are able to manually apply a true type font of your liking to your text string. So I make sure that uh, this uh, field here is active by clicking one time in it and uh, we do not choose close. We do have to press enter once more and now the shape string object is inserted here. As you can see we have this small tick mark again. So if you like you can regenerate your document within FreeCAD and the text is now inserted. Something special within FreeCAD about inserting text string is that unlike sketches you cannot apply the text strings to faces and use them for example for pocket operations. So we will need to insert our text string, extrude or pad it to be a separate solid and then we can perform boolean operations in our uh, case a boolean cut operation to get our engraved text. So I'm switching to part workbench, select the sh shape string object here and use the part extrude tool. We will leave these values at default value showing that we will extrude in Z direction about one millimeter. We will tick the checkbox create solid in order to be able to perform our boolean operation later on. We don't need a taper outward angle so let's leave this value at default. By clicking on OK you will see that we now got an extruded 
text object. For positioning our extruded text object correctly in 3D space, we will need with time the help of a sketch. So we do a right click on this object here, toggle the visibility, we do a right click here, toggle the visibility to get back our chamfer object. We will switch to a sketcher workbench. We will select this slope face here and we will click on uh, uh, create a new sketch to apply sketch to here this face. So now we will create a line. We will make sure that the line is horizontal and within 0 0.16 stable release from FreeCAD we need now to do a right click to end the appropriate sketcher command. Also in 0 0.16 stable release you can select objects in your sketch by just clicking, clicking and clicking uh, further. Clicking in empty space will deselect everything and thus uh, end the selection itself. So I don't need to uh, press the control key anymore to do a multi-selection. I just click on this point and now I'm clicking on this point and I apply a horizontal dimension of 2,5 millimeters. I select these two points once more and I apply a vertical constraint of 2,5 millimeters again. The length of the line does not matter in our case. We will just leave it like it is. We will close our sketch. And the next thing is that we should uh, position our extruded text correctly in 3D space to be able to perform our boolean cut operation. Now I'm doing a right click on the chamfer object. I select the toggle visibility. I do a right click here and make my extruded text visible again. So now I'm applying a placement and it should be an increment placement. with my text. So um, I make sure that the extrude object here is selected. I do one click here in a placement box and then I'm clicking on these three dots here to be able to apply the placement needed. So I'm going to apply an incremental placement. I'm going to rotate around the z-axis by 90 degrees. I click on apply and the changes are applied and everything in this uh, input mask is resetted again. So now I'm switching here to the Y axis and I am applying an angle of 45 degrees. Apply. We click on OK and now we are able to move with the help of the draft move command, this extruded text object correctly uh, into its end position in 3D space. Within FreeCAD, you have to select some workbenches at least once before being able to access their preferences. So I'm going to select the draft workbench and by clicking on Edit Preferences and choosing the draft symbol here, we can see that, for example, with texts and dimensions, I did set my shape string default font file to be my Arial TrueType font on my system. 
Also with grid and snapping, I have set um, a snap mode to always on, but you can't disable it. And um, since I don't like to use the grid in the draft workbench, I've turned it off by default. So now we want to position this text here. Uh, we want to move this point here to this point here and then do our boolean cut. So we are already within the draft workbench. We will toggle the visibility of the chamfer object back. We will switch to wireframe mode to be able to uh, work a little bit better with FreeCAD. So now we have here our snap modes. By pressing one of the buttons, the snap mode is activated. Sometimes some of the snap modes may interfere a little bit. So the best idea is to have only the snap modes turned on, which you will need. By choosing the move command, you can either first select the object to be moved and then choose the move command, or you can choose the move command and then select the object to be moved. In this case, I'm selecting here my extruded text. I'm choosing the move command. I make sure that I have turned my endpoint snapping on. And I'm moving to this point here and the point is highlighted with a white dot and in the bottom right corner uh, at my cursor position this uh, snap symbol for snapping to endpoints is being shown um, as a sign that FreeCAD recognizes this endpoint in this case of this uh, edge here so I click and I am able now to move my text around in 3D space and I am moving my cursor here until it shows again this white dot and in the bottom right corner this uh, snapping symbol to endpoints again. So I do one more click and as we can see here by moving the object around we are in the correct position to do our boolean cut. So we switch to a part workbench. We first select our base object. When I'm going to press control on the keyboard and select the object to be cut away, I'm releasing the control button and I'm clicking on boolean cut. Okay, I'm switching back to as is mode and as you can see here we did get the object we wanted to have with chamfered cube here with our engraved text. The sketch, which is still shown here, is the sketch we used for positioning. If you like, you can delete it or you can leave it for further references in uh, in your file. You even can rename it and uh, let's name it something like uh, posi uh, position sketch number one so that you instantly will recognize if you have a peek some weeks later in your file hey this is the sketch I used for positioning uh, my 3D extruded text object. So now we have reached the end of this tutorial. I hope I was able to show something useful and maybe we'll see each other again in another video tutorial. Bye!